think the Leafs owe it to themselves to really go for it this year. I think I think there's two trades to be made. And I, Justin Bourne said it on the uh, intermission show, I think yesterday. Um, they're, they're probably going to be the most active Canadian team in the trade deadline. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's, and I think you got to get, I think you got to get another impact forward in the top six um, because they've tried and tried and tried to make Kerfoot work there. And I just don't think it's going to. Um, I think they need somebody who's a little bit mean, like another bunting. If you could clone bunting and put him on both lines, that'd be super good. Oh man. How great has he been? What, what an unreal fit. I mean, what an, uh, like all he's got to do, uh, the Marner uh, assists to bunting yesterday. Mm-hmm. Leave your stick on the ice. And like, don't even look at the puck and Marner will pass it in a way where it just, mwah, just glances off of your stick and into the net. It's, it's he's such a good fit. Is John Tavares being visibly upset on that second line and visibly frustrated, I should say, and struggling over the last little bit. Is that a part of our conversations today? I don't think Any- it helps at all. I don't think it helps anybody Him at all. Smashing his stick. Yeah. Like I know we're talking about, the team not looking like they care or whatever. Um, Yes, that is showing that you care, but it's also showing you have no solutions. And uh, that I don't think is a trend. I want to see continue from the Leafs captain. And I'm probably going to get shit for that, but I know it's a feeling around the league um, and it can't happen. I I will say this. Um, as, as uh, an extension of the conversation, uh, I don't have complaints about the way Leaf games have been officiated this year in general. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're getting beat up more than, you know, they beat up other teams or whatever. I mean, on most nights, I feel like the Leafs are drawing more penalties than the other team. John Tavares should be drawing more penalties than he is. Last night, that was pretty clear. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and that's not his fault. That's they've decided to call the game a certain way. Maybe that's his relationship with the officials, because there's a lot of nights where I think he could probably take more penalties. Um, again, he's not the most fleet of foot. He gets into a lot of really intimate battles with players. And, you know, sometimes his stick will come up or, you know, I, I wonder if, okay, was it the shaft of the sticker? Did he get the gloves? But because Tavares is in so many intimate battles, um, if he's getting hooked and held and it's going uncalled, what's he supposed to do? That's his bread and butter, and you've taken it away from him by allowing it to be open season on him. So I don't like the way he's reacting to the adversity right now. I don't like the 10-game goal streak, but if there was a reason for him to be frustrated, it's that you can do basically whatever you want to him. And it kind of screws his game up. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. My, my thoughts well, about that. And there's a lot of like, I, I really have a problem with this. There's a lot of like uh, takes out there that are like, well, he's not very good anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, so that, that's that. not true. He I was mean, good two weeks ago. Yeah. Like, like right. I, he can go through a bad time. <laughs> He can have he a he still, can have a rough couple weeks. Is he not still like a one or two points off of a point a game player? Forty six and forty eight, I believe. There you go. Come on, a guy's yeah. putting up eighty two and eighty two is not washed. And that's what there he does. Go. He puts up eighty two and eighty two every year. He's not going to score forty seven goals every year like he did the first time because he's playing with he wasn't playing with Marner anymore, right? Because like, of, that's b- because of the money he's held to the standard of Austin Matthews, which is just an unrealistic standard for he, everybody that's it steve like he <laughs> he has the joy of being compared to austin matthews for some reason like the thing is john Tavares, no austin matthews in the picture john Tavares is the best centerman the toronto maple Leafs have had since matt sundin and before that doug gilmore that's it no if there's no matt if there's no uh, austin matthews that's the truth those four have been the best centers on the team in the last 30 years and unfortunately for John, he gets to be compared to Austin Matthews, who can seemingly score at will these days. You're handing so, out a lot of disrespect to Tyler Bozak. Sorry, Tyler. Whoa. You'd be number five, probably. Um, or Nas. Nas yeah. has got to be in there, too. We're at least a couple seasons away uh, from talking about him taking a step backwards. We're at least a couple seasons away 
from even uttering a whisper of a trade rumor. Um, this is a really good player uh, in a slump, man. Like it's yeah. To me, it's it's not complicated at all. Uh, the Kerfoot thing, though, on that line has always. I, I don't know, guys. Has that ever felt to me that has felt forced from the beginning? When he looks good, um, I feel like <laughs> when he looks good, the line clicks because there's no there's no obvious solution for how to deal with that line. Um, Marner and Matthews have been another level this year, but part of what's helped them go to another level is Michael Bunting has been so good that there's no clear solution. Yeah. What's he had 10 goals in eight games or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's ridiculous. Um, Kerfoot, his good nights are really understated and his bad nights are invisible. I like him as a pedaling killer. Yeah, I do, but. Man, that second line left wing. Uh, part of me wonders. Here's what we got. Because I'm, I'm looking at moves the Leafs could potentially make. And they're all on the left uh, up front. Kerfoot, who's your second left winger right now. Mm-hmm. Ilya Mikheyev, who's your third left winger right now. And I'll get to him. And Pierre Engvall, who's your fourth. Engvall making 1.25 is too much. Yeah, McKayev making 1.65 is fine, but then he's a UFA and you're probably not going to be able to keep him. Then there's Kerfoot. Mm-hmm. I think they're looking at moving all of them. I don't think all of them will be dealt, obviously. I would be surprised if it was more than one. I wouldn't be surprised if it was none. But I do think they got to take a long, hard look at that. But the problem with making a move on any of those guys is the Leafs penalty kill is a really underrated strength oh, yeah. this year. Fantastic. Unless, you know, the guy goes in and friggin' Adam Boquist. Um, all those guys play on the PK. Well, I think I think Kerfoot's the one you can lose on that. I, I think that third line's been spectacular. I don't I wouldn't want to mess with that. Mikhaev, Kampf, uh, Kasha, Kasha. I love that line. And you've got Marner, all those guys can can penalty kill to an extent and then you got Marner who can penalty kill as well although you don't want to use that too much I think you got enough so to me Kerfoot you can you can deal without him because because of that third line which has just been spectacular uh I what a what a great third line that has been right just a pain in the ass to play against 